And it is now my honor to introduce our next featured speaker, Mr. Tomotaka Inoue, Counselor in the Office of National Space Policy for the Cabinet Office of Japan. As many of you are aware, Japan has gone through a significant shift in its space policy since we last had a senior speaker from the Cabinet Office Address the Space Symposium. We are pleased to hear from Mr. Inoue on the latest developments. Mr. Inoue, we welcome your remarks. Oh, thank you for introducing me. Uh, my name is Tomotaka Inoue from Office of National Space Policy, Cabinet Office of Japan. Today, I'm honored to be here, and I appreciate Space Foundation gives me a chance to make a presentation uh, in a such a traditional event. At first, Junya Nishimoto, a chief officer of my office, plans to appear on this stage, but unfortunately, he is forced to handle urgent issue in Japan. So he sends me to the National Space Symposium. Some audience may be disappointed at young pinch hitter, but please do not be upset. Content of today's presentation will be unchanged even if Yoshimoto comes here, because he also leads out a speech memo, which I prepare. <laughs> now let's start. Today, I will introduce outline of Japan's new basic plan on space policy. This plan was finalized by Ministerial Meeting for Space Policy last January. Before explaining new plan right away, in order to understand the author's intention more precisely, I would like to start the story from background of Japanese uh, space policy. Uh, Japan's space policy has experienced unusual history until now. Ordinary state carries out its space activities in order to solve realistic policy issues, including national security, disaster management, territory surveillance, or resource exploitation. In addition to these purposes, some advanced states may intend to promote commercial benefit or national prestige. As for Japan, there were two conspicuous policies compared to ordinary states. Firstly, no military use, self-regulation. Diet approved the policy in 1969 that Japan does not use space systems for military purpose. It means Japanese military forces cannot use or possess any space equipment. Unlike other state sports forces, Japanese forces cannot incorporate space systems into defense plan. In 1985, it is approved that this self-regulation was relaxed to some extent. Japanese force can use and possess space systems that are widely employed in civil purpose. Thanks to this uh, loosened understanding of self-regulation, Japanese forces can use communication satellite service. And also, Japan introduced information gathering satellites, IGS. It is optical and radar Earth observation satellites. However, there was still restriction on specification of IGS. For example, too high resolution was not allowed. And Japan could not have early warning satellite because they are not used for civil area. Secondly, it was encouraged in the 1970s through 1980s to develop satellite for practical use. Japan developed weather satellite and communication and broadcast satellite too in that days. However, since the 1990s, main target of space policy has come to only technical interest or academic research. Japan is getting away from activities for practical use, and at last, satellite or rocket development itself becomes the purpose. For instance, Japan developed ALOS. It carried wide swath optical sensor and L-band radar sensor. It left a large amount of data, some of them are used for practical use, and it had good results in uh, research for environment. It also found out the landslide by the Great East Japan earthquake and flooded area by tsunami. However, after it died caused by five-year design life, two months after the Great Earthquake happened, 
Japan has no satellite data anymore. If we use satellite data operationally, replace of ALOS must be scheduled to launch without blank. Another example is WINS. It succeeded to verify the space-based broadband internet. But in Japan, ground-based communication infrastructure improves so rapidly that we cannot find a business chance. As a result of this course of actions, Japan got behind in establishing space-based infrastructure, commercial use of space, including analysis capability of space data, and industry competitiveness. In 2008, Japan's space policy started to change. Some politicians considered the above two policies to be outdated and they constituted the space basic law in a bipartisan manner. This law substantially ends the military use regulation, and Japan can use space systems for defense purpose within the Japanese peaceful constitution. At the same time, the space basic law proclaimed that Japan's space policy aims at not only technical development, but also promote civil, commercial, and military use utilization to solve a problematic issue. New project must be not by R&D driven, as it used to be, but by user needs driven. This principle is surprisingly simple. But in Japan, this idea had been faded away for more than 20 years until this law was enacted. And also, Japan noticed the space policy should be made up from national level point of view, not from just building isolated activity that each, each agency implements by itself. That's why the law establishes a new ministerial meeting for space policy chaired by Prime Minister. This meeting becomes a top decision making body in this area. Permission of military use modified definition of purpose, and a new decision-making body. These three topics are the main message of the space basic law. The next change happened in 2012. Conceptual modification brought by the space basic law is not enough to make Japanese space activity more beneficial. Headquarter function having broad perspective is essential to unify separate projects and produce synergy. For that purpose, Japan restructured responsibility of space relevant ministries and JAXA, Japanese Space Agency. Since 2008, the ministerial meeting for space was established, but responsibility of each ministry was untouched. The space basic law written in 2008 ordered to restructure the framework of government organization in around one year. The agenda is how to build more centralized administration and how to handle JAXA. We took two main treatments by the Space Amendment Act enacted in 2012. First thing is making the Office of National Space Policy in Cabinet Office. This office is in charge of official level coordination. Cabinet Office originally has the authority for coordinating each ministry with a higher standpoint. The Amendment Act gave the Office of National Policy authority of the headquarter. The office is responsible for handling comprehensive space issues, prioritizing space activity, and evaluating projects carried out by each ministry. In addition, Office of National Space Policy is able to implement individual operational projects like positioning and navigation satellite. PMT system is ex expected to be used in a wide range of areas, including national security, transportation, land survey, construction, and finance. This type of space system having a broad range of users was hard to be assigned to one responsible agency. Therefore, the necessity of PNT satellites can gain consensus of all concerned, but no ministry want to, be, want to take responsibility for developing and operating it. 
This problem was also solved by establishing Office of National Space Policy. Headquarters itself can implement versatile system, so it is easier to realize this kind of system. The second treatment is to reform JAXA. JAXA was supervised by Ministry of Science and Technology, MEXT, and the Ministry of Information and Communication, MIC. JAXA is mainly interested in new technology and exploration. It is not until solving practical issue or enhancing living level that technology is variable. In this sense, JAXA was criticized by many people who say that JAXA pursues endless R&D and brings no benefit to people on the Earth. Just after the Space Basic Law was enacted, experts discussed how to reform JAXA and reported some proposals, which are from minor change to radical one. Finally, we chose mid-course. In short, JAXA plays role in the Central Implementation Institution for Japanese Space Policy. And it should contribute to not only science and technology, but also any policy issues Japan faces. The policy issues include national security. In 1969, JAXA, called NASDAQ at the time, was originally established for space development. But it cannot touch military activity and there's no military use self-regulation. However, the Space Basic Law paved the way to use the space system for defense purpose in 2008. Then JAXA's role is broadened to be able to work for national security by the Space Amendment Act. Based on the stretch of JAXA's function, the Cabinet Office and the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, METI, newly add to supervise JAXA. Through these two treatments, government organization is institutionally restructured to harmonize space activities with each other under the headquarter instruction. Based on the basic space law, Ministerial Meeting for Space makes up the basic plan on space policy. The new basic plan was finalized last January under the fresh government organization. This is five-year plan from 2013 for seeing the next 10 years. The previous plan was created in 2009. Compared to the previous plan, it is meaningful in that the new plan clearly indicates priority of project. In the previous plan, some projects are not surely backed up by budget in the future, but all of them are incorporated with optimistic estimation of a budget increase. In fact, there was enthusiasm to boost the space budget just after the space basic law was active. Japan's space-related budget is about $3 billion. When the pre previous plan was discussed, people believed the budget will increase to $5 billion. However, real space budget does not increase as, expe as expected. The budget bill now requesting diet for 2013 fiscal year is at most $3.3 billion. Now we are forced to accept the situation. The space budget will not increase in the near future in the midst of severe fiscal circumstances all over Japan. Given $3 billion of space budget, the previous plan cannot be realized anymore. Therefore, new plans should take into account the priority seriously. In order to set up the criteria of priority, two principles are defined in the new plan. One is to expand the use of space in the area of enhancement of living level, national security, disaster management, and economic growth. This principle comes from the lesson that many R&D projects fall into paying little attention to practical use. It means no R&D for R&D. The second principle is to ensure autonomy. Japan should retain capability to pursue autonomous space activities by enhancing industrial competitiveness. If we keep the capability dependent only on government demand, we need a lot of state budget, and it is not an efficient way. Therefore, 
government encourages Japanese companies to get private demand or overseas demand to some extent. The above two principles are the basic criteria to prioritize Japan's space activities. Among space systems, PMT, remote sensing, communication and broadcast satellite have a potential to expand the use of space. And the launch vehicle for these three types of satellites is necessary to ensure autonomy. Therefore, the priority is, firstly, we secure sufficient resources for these four space systems. Secondly, allocate a certain size of resources to space science. And finally, then to space exploration and human space activities. The new plan picks up three main targets forecast to be solved by the use of space. That is, national security and disaster management, development of industry, and a space science frontier. Among them, national security attracts attention the most. Recently, tension in the East Asia region is getting higher. North Korea gets ready to launch a missile as I speak now. And China is reinforcing its military power. Japanese defense is based on the cooperation with the U.S. forces. So far, Japan has contributed to the U.S.-Japan alliance by means of BMD, IGS spy satellite, and QZSS PNT satellites. Japan starts a discussion of SSA as the next collaboration item. The more Japan depends on space system, the more important SSA is. Sustainable use of space becomes a big challenge for both countries. Another thing, uh, maritime domain awareness is getting more important too. The number of invasion of Japanese territorial waters around the Senkaku Island is extremely increasing these days. Japan reinforces Coast Guard ships in this area, but it is not enough. We think monitoring by satellite is useful. A certain number of satellites are necessary to take an image more than once a day. Japan is proposing to establish this satellite system with ASEAN countries. They face a similar threat. And this satellite system will work for natural disasters too. I believe Taking care of the East Asian sea land led by Japan is a benefit for the United States and other friendly nations. This is an important message of new basic plan on space policy. The new plan is organized to be a realistic one. It was often the case that Japanese people see space activities as dreams and hopes, and they are generous for speech in the past. However, Japan's economy has been inactive, though it looks better by Prime Minister Abe's leadership in treatment for economy. Uh, thanks to his policy, Japanese yen is rapidly uh, getting lower this week. But personally, I want to stop cheaper yen until I finish my payment for broad more accommodation. <laughs> anyway, Japan still faces fiscal difficulty and it is high time to select necessary projects with a severe realistic view. I will explain more about the detailed content of the new plan. As I referred, four space systems, PNT satellites, remote sensing satellites, communication and broadcast satellites, and the launch vehicle system are the key systems from the view of the two principles. These four systems should be established as social infrastructures to expand the use of space and ensure autonomy. Therefore, these are the priorities in the new plan. Infrastructure means the satellites for research and test do not work. It is essential to launch satellites for reserve or replacement before the previous satellite life. And it provides service to the large number of customers continuously. Japan has many test or research satellites, but the satellite system can be called infrastructure is limited so far. First of four social infrastructure is PMT satellites. Advanced countries are trying to build up own system, GPS, GRONAS, 
Galileo, and Beidou. Japan should not get behind in this area. Japan is now developing four satellite constellation of Kuwashi Zenith Satellite System, QZSS. It will start to provide service by the late 2010s. We aim at seven satellite constellations in the future. To expand use of space, we are taking actions to promote new applications and deploy them to overseas. And R&D for next generation of PND satellites is also important. The QZSS is regional navigation system covering Asia Pacific area with moving like number eight character. The navigation signals of QZSS are compatible with GPS, such as L1CA, L2, and L5. Like WARS and EGNOS, QZSS broadcasts augmentation signals for submeter or centimeter. And the QZSS e equips coded signals for classified users. The second is remote sensing satellites. Remote sensing has huge potential of applications, including surveillance, maritime domain awareness, land control, resource exploitation, weather forecast, agricultural yield prediction, and so on. Japan will e emphasize on land and ocean observation from now. Japan already operates information gathering satellite IGS and weather satellites for national security and disaster management as infrastructures. Japan aims at operating constellation system in order to provide continuously the same type of satellite cities data, including optical and radar, and increased frequency of taking image. And Japan will make an effort to promote satellite data applications and services. Japan will keep operating IGS and weather satellites as they used to be. Japan is developing ALOS 2 and Arsenal 1 and 2 to feature the land and ocean observation and also GoSat sensing greenhouse gases, GCOMW catching the water cycle, and other satellites are being operated. The third is communication and broadcast satellites. This area is basically established by commercial market. Government needs are satisfied by procuring private service. However, government should take an action to catch up technology advance. It is necessary to carry out R&D to meet future civil and commercial demands. For instance, large power supply bus and flexible beam forming. The Great East Japan earthquake and the tsunami shut down almost all of the land-based infrastructures and only space-based in communication is alive. We learn a lesson from this event. Japan will ensure satellite communication infrastructures necessary to national security and disaster management. Japan is developing expand military use communication satellites. Japan is testing ETS-8, large extended antenna, and WINS broadband internet satellites. The last of four social infrastructures is launch vehicle. Japan is operating H-2A and B rocket and developing Ypsilon rocket. However, there are pilots of policy issues to solve, such as limited launch chances, withdrawal of suppliers, weak competitiveness, aging technicians, and a too tight budget to start a large investment. Japan starts comprehensive discussion to find out a narrow path to handle this matter with a mid-long term view. In the box, as I mentioned, Japan operates h 2 a rocket and the developing Ypsilon and the LNG engine is under testing. Next to the four social infrastructures, the new basic plan introduced three programs so as to pro so pursue future possibility. Space science and space exploration program, human space activity program, and space solar power system program. Considering the outstanding achievements so far in space science, it should be allocated a certain size of funds and carried out proposed by academic community based on the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science. With regard to International Space Station, it constantly reduces costs. 
especially after 2016, aims at compressing costs by making the operation more efficient. Japan also performs the solar transmission experiment on the ground, taking into account the possibility that this program will offer energy source in the future. The new basic plan also points out eight cross measures to promote strategic development and usable space, such as measures to expand usable space, to strengthen industrial base, to reinforce diplomacy and national security, to support private companies to get a business chance overseas, to promote capability to get and analyze information for planning policy, to educate human resources, to preserve environment for sustainable use of space, and to discuss space activity law. Finally, the new basic plan uh, includes methods of promoting space-related measures efficiently and effectively, elimination of redundancy, public-private partnership, cooperation between related ministries, measures to support outreach overseas, reinforcement of project evaluation, and reduction of operating and maintenance costs. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day.